into the annals of brave men at the Battle of the Alamo, along with those of Davy Crockett and Colonel Travis, is on his way home again, heading south along the Natchez Trace toward his plantation in Opelousas, Louisiana. Plantation owner, adventurer, Jim Bowie is always coming home because he's always going away, looking for new lands, new timber, and new adventure. But he never stayed anywhere very long, just until the adventure was finished. And then he'd start drifting homeward again. That is, unless another adventure delayed him. Hey, now, look at this. Hello, Mrs. Bear. Now, you keep away from me now. I'm not hunting bear. You keep away from me now. I gotta find the pendable weapon, which I'll have to use on you if you don't keep away. Uh, one, go home. Scat. Now, I don't want to shoot you, Mrs. Bear. But if you don't keep away now, I'm warning you. It wasn't the first time a flintlock muzzleloader had misfired and nearly cost Jim Bowie his life. After the encounter with Mrs. Bear, he was determined to have a weapon that would match her claws, a weapon he could depend on. So this is the story of how the blade that was later to be known as the Bowie knife was born. don't live here no more, mister. Moved down to the country. Oh. Hey, can you tell me, is there a doctor in town? Yep, traveling doc, over at Yancey's store, making his regular monthly visit. One more day and you'd have had a bad case of poisoning of the blood. Clean it up good, doc. Hey, mug of ale for my friend Jim Bowie, and a mug for me to keep him company. Every time the doc comes around, this thieving bunch of riffraff moves in. <laughs> Keep your eye on Gypsy Joe and Louie and the cash box. You want that blanket? It'll cost you a dollar. Here's some mail, Jim. Well, thank you, Angie. Well, here's quick healing to that arm of yours. Now, what brings you to Yancey's Corner? Timber? Sugarcane land? No, as a matter of fact, I'm on my way home. Just sold some parcels of land up around Memphis. But that isn't why I come here. I'm looking for Sam Black, the steel maker. You see, when that bear came at me and my gun misfired, I made up my mind right then and there I was going to get myself something more reliable. I was going to get myself a knife. Skin and knife? Oh, I got a fine selection. 
Mm -mm. I got a skin and knife. What I want is a special kind of knife. The kind of knife I want hasn't been made yet. That's why I come to see Sam Black. I remember my father used to say, he makes the best steel in the whole Louisiana. Oh, he used to, but no more. He closed up a shop a couple of years back, got himself a little farm. Why'd he do that? Well, nobody knows exactly. He just stopped and moved. I'll tell you, boy, I'm going to give you some ointment and some fresh bandages. I want you to use them. If you don't, you're going to have trouble. Oh, I'll use them, Doc. I'll use them. How much are you? Oh, uh, with a salve, one dollar. One dollar? That's a fair enough price. Here you are. I've got you for ten dollars. Oh. Well, here, Yancey, you pay it, will you? Put on my bill. Hey. Thanks. Now, keep that clean, you hear? Yes, I will. Thank you, Doc. Where's this farm the blacks have moved to? Bayou Lot Turno. Straight south by the river road, about six, seven miles. Yeah? Huh? I think I'll go have a talk with Mr. Black. I want him to make me a knife. <laughs> so do a lot of people. I can sell anything he makes. If you can persuade him, let me know, huh? Well, maybe a little of this uh, gold will persuade him. Thanks for the ale, Yancey. Yeah. I'll see you on my way back. Right. me, Miss Black, don't you? I'm uh, Jim Boyd from Opelousa. Don't you remember me? Of course. Mr. Black, it's Mrs. Boyd's boy, Jim. Welcome, Jim. Welcome. Hello, Mr. Black. Have you ridden far? Uh, from Yancey's Corners. Then you must be tired. I'll get you a glass of Mr. Black's elderberry wine. Oh, well, thank you, ma'am. Now, you sit right down here with Mr. Black, and I won't be but a minute. How is your mother? Well, she's fine, ma'am. Spanking fine. <laughs> and your brother, Reason? Uh, he's fine, uh, too. Mrs. Black. Jim's thirsty. Oh, I'm going, Mr. Black. Oh, my. Women sure do love to talk, don't they? <laughs> uh, that's what my father used to say. Yeah, that is, when Mama would stop talking long enough to let him get a word in. Yeah, well, we don't have too many visitors out this way. I suppose you're wondering why I've come to see you. There you are. Well, thank you, Mr. Black. This is real social-like of you to call on us, James. My land, what happened to your arm? Mm, or I had a little argument with a lady. A lady bear. She out-talks me. <laughs> well, that figures. Oh, now, Mr. Black. <laughs> That's why I come to see you, Mr. Black. I want you to make me a knife. A knife? Next time I have an argument with a lady, I'd like to win it. Well, but Mr. Yancey has a real good assortment of knives. Oh, no, Mr. Black. Those kind of knives are too short to get through the fat of a bear. And they're too brittle when they hit bone. The kind of knife I have in mind is a... Oh, it's a special kind of knife. A knife I have in mind would have a blade about this long. It would be twice, maybe three times as thick as an ordinary knife. And be curved toward the tip and double-edged, sort of cut two ways. And it would be balanced for throwing. So it would have to be made of the, the very finest steel. So the tip wouldn't break off when it hit something solid. I, I don't know, maybe I'm asking the impossible. But I do know this, Mr. Black, if anyone can make me this knife, it's you. Double-edged tip. It's a most unusual knife. You have to be tempered six, oh, maybe seven times very carefully. But, Jim, that's not just a knife. That's a weapon. That's right, Mr. Black. Knife doesn't miss fire, and it's always loaded. Yes, be an awful lot of work. Well, I'll supply the muscle and the sweat. All you'd have to do is supply the knowledge. That knife does fire my imagination, kind of like a challenge. Two years ago, I would have accepted it, but now I... I can't even see my wife's face across the supper table. I'm just groping around in a world of shadows, and it's getting worse. That's why I closed up my shop. Things will be different tomorrow. We're going in to see Dr. Hogue at the corners. He wrote us that he has some fine new spectacles with imported German lenses. We've been saving our money for it. Oh, I, I almost forgot. Here's another dollar. 
Mr. Query paid his milk bill. Yeah, spectacles. Even if we could afford them, there's no telling how much good they'll do. Jim, I think whatever the Lord wills, we have to accept. But Mr. Black, if the doctor can't help you, I mean, if the lenses do make you see again, will you make me the knife? Well, Jim, I'd be happy to. Now that that's settled, you'll be staying for supper, James. It'll be a pleasure, ma'am. There. That ought to hold you until you get home. Thank you, ma'am. Now, if you have time, I can fix your jacket for you. No, I think I ought to be going now. Wouldn't you like some more coffee, Jane? Well, maybe just half a cup. Where do you learn to make steel like this, Mr. Black? In the old country. What's the secret? Tempering. It's like a good stew, Jim. It isn't what you put into it, it's how you cook it that counts. I'll get your horse. No, no, I'll get it. Keep your seat. Your coffee. Mr. Black can get your horse. Huh. I encourage him to do all he can. It gives him confidence. You're not only a good cook, you're a wise woman, Mr. Black. This isn't Bowie. Who cares? His money's just as good. Help! Jim! Help! Somebody hit me on the head and took all my money. Who was it? Did you see him? No, I didn't see him. Did they say anything? Yes. One of them said, this ain't boy. Then they were after me. All that money gone now, we can't get your spectacles. Don't you worry, Mrs. Black. Your husband will get his spectacles. Just have them at Yancey's store first thing in the morning. I saw him. He was beat up and robbed. He couldn't do any work. That's why I come back here. Give me a room for the night, will you, Yancey? Sure. Just sign the book and give me a dollar. Oh, better make it two dollars. I paid the doc for you, remember? All right. You take care of my horse, will you? Fifty cents more. There you are. That suits you? Well, don't get mad about it. Everybody has to sign. You look like you can't read. I can read all right, don't worry. I want you to put the rest of this gold in the safe for me. Oh, I ain't got a safe, it was stolen. Oh, well, uh, give me a room with a good strong lock on the door. I ain't got no keys. One by one, they just come up missing. Hmm, this is a fine hotel. You make it easy for thieves, don't you? Well, if you're so scared of getting robbed, just shove your bed against the door. Oh, that's not good enough. Give me a hammer and some nails. I'll nail the door up. You shouldn't carry so much money anyways. Well, I have to till I get to the bank in Opelousa. Here, nail yourself a number six down the hall. Number six got a window? One of my best rooms. Plenty of fresh air. Good. Fresh air is one thing I like. Good night. Good night. Beats me. Traipsing around the country, carrying a fortune on him. Just looking for trouble. Give me a nightcap, Pete. Make it a double. Mm -hmm.
right, Jim? Yeah, I'm fine. Just been entertaining a couple of visitors. You know these two? Yeah, it's Gypsy Joe and Louie. Yeah, these are the two who robbed Mr. Black, all right? This is his money pouch. Well, I've been watching these filthy scum for a long time. You got any place we can lock them up while we send for the sheriff? Yeah, I got a hog sty out in back. It's full of fertilizer, though. Yeah? Just the place. You grab the other one. Right. Now, just a minute. Now, tell me when the small letters are clear. Yes, now they are. I-O-E-T-C-E. -E. Oh, I tell you, Sam. I don't blame you for grinning, Jim. Looks like you're going to get your knife. Oh, I wasn't grinning at that. You know, you need two pairs, Mr. Black. Oh? Yeah, one for close work, one to hand on, and another pair for distance. Mr. Black, can you identify these two gentlemen here at the county? Of course I can. That's my old friend Yancey and Jim Bowie. Thanks for giving me my eyes oh, back. Sam, I didn't. Oh, wait a minute. You're all blurred. My close glasses, if you please, Mrs. Black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks again, Jim. <laughs> nice to see you, Yancey. How about this? should be about there, throwing, say, uh, one complete turn in 30 feet. Light the forge, Jim. Yes, sir. <laughs> seen a piece of steel as fine as this in my whole life. There's a lot of gratitude in that blade, Jim. Come on outside. I want you to throw it. Huh? Come on, come on. Yeah, it's all right. Now, come here, Jim. That tree right... Uh-oh. This is black, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That tree right there is about 30 feet. Go ahead and throw it. It's such a beautiful thing. I, I hate to risk it. Oh, it won't break. You sure? I'm sure. Go ahead. All right. 
<laughs> Both our knives are in the tree, mister. Now we're even. It's Gypsy Joe and Louie, they broke out. Joe, your quarrel's with the sheriff. My quarrel's with him, Yancey. I got a welt in the back of my head to prove it. <laughs> Take that, Yancey. Come on, you two. Back to the hog stand. And Yancey, will you keep him there till the sheriff gets here? Oh, it worked fine, Black. Just fine. Yeah, just one defect. Hmm? Which I'll remedy right away. Come, Mrs. Black. Here you are, Jim. Put a strip of brass along the back. Yes, the brass is softer than steel. Catch your opponent's knife and his blade won't slip off so easily. My opponent? Mr. Black, I didn't want this knife for fighting men. Jim, there are men in this world who are more savage than beasts. Use this wisely and may it always protect you. Thank you. I made this for it, James. Well, thank you, Miss Black. <laughs> thank you both very much. Take care of yourself, Jim. I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Give my regards to your mother. This is the true story of how the knife was born. The knife that was to grow in legendary feats until it was known the world over by the name of its inventor, the Bowie Knife. Fighter, a fearless and mighty adventuring man. 